Hello everyone, welcome to Bit of Anatomy. In this tutorial, we will see the features of connective tissue which binds the other tissues. There are various components like matrix and cells. The matrix includes ground substance which is made up of proteoglycans and various types of fibers. So there are mainly three types of fibers, the collagen, the elastic and the reticular fibers. So first we will see the features of the fibers. Collagen fibers, they are arranged in bundles. Each bundle will branch, but each single fiber will not branch. So as you can see, they are arranged in bundles and each bundle will show branching pattern but there is no branching of each individual fiber. The major function of this collagen fibers is it provides tensile strength. It can be seen in uh, tissues like uh, ligament, tendon, the fascia. In contrast, the elastic fibers, they are single, they branch, the branches will unite and redivide. So in stretched phase, we can see straight fibers which are branching, whereas in the relaxed phase, we will see wavy fibers which show branching pattern. So it is present wherever elasticity is required like in elastic arteries. So the last type is the reticular fibers which is a type of the collagen fiber. So we, here we see small wavy fibers which are unbranching and usually it does not take up H&D stain. So we should use some special stain like uh, silver stains. So it is present in the liver and spleen where it forms the framework. So as I said, it is not stained with H and E stain. So if you see the cells of the connective tissue, there are basically two types, the fixed cell, which are always present in the connective tissue, and the migratory cells, which enter the connective tissue whenever the need arises. So the most common cell is the fibroblast. As the name suggests, it helps in the formation of the various type of the fibers. So it is the active cell. So it is comparatively a larger cell with numerous cytoplasmic processes which helps in the synthesis of the collagen, elastic and reticular fibers. So the other type of cell which is commonly seen is fibrocyte. So it also forms the fibers but it is less active cell or the mature cell. So the cells are very small, slender thin with a long nucleus in the center. So next type of cell is the adipocyte or adipose cell or fat cell. So it stores energy in the form of the fat and wherever it is present in large amount it is called as adipose tissue. So each individual cell it contains a peripheral thin rim of cytoplasm peripherally situated nucleus which is flat. The nucleus is pushed to the flat because of the central fat globule. So the entire appearance of this adipose cell it is in the shape of a ring and hence it is called a signet ring appearance. So the fat globule appears empty because during regular staining procedure we use xylin which will dissolve the fat. We can use some special stains without using xylin to stain the fat tissue. So next is the stem cell or the mesenchymal cell. So as the name suggests it is the cell which forms the other type of cells of the connective tissue. Then we have pigment cell. So, which is present in large quantity 
in areas like dermis of the skin so where it gives color to the skin and it contains large amounts of melanin so next we have the lymphocyte so basically there are two types the b and t lymphocyte where b lymphocyte helps in humoral immunity and t lymphocyte helps in cell mediated immunity structurally both appears almost same so there are two types of lymphocytes a small and a large it has got a large nucleus which almost fills the entire cell with a small amount of cytoplasm in the periphery so these lymphocytes can be appreciated in the slide of the connective tissue so next we have the plasma cell so when we are, the body is exposed to antigen b lymphocyte gets activated and forms the plasma cell this plasma cell secretes the antibody which destroys the antigen so plasma cell is round to oval cell the characteristic feature is presence of cartwheel appearance of the nucleus because of the arrangement of nucleoli and we can see russell bodies so which secretes the or which stores the antibodies then we have macrophages it is not stained by regular slides in regular slides it can be prepared with india ink preparation where the macrophage phagocyte versus the india ink so it is a large cell with the central nucleus and in the peripheral processes which are filled with the foreign material or in this slide preparation the india ink so other type of cells which comes from the bloodstream includes the eosinophils the mast cells the basophils, neutrophils. So now, after knowing the fibers and the cells, we will see classification of the connective tissue. It is basically classified into loose connective tissue and adipose tissue, which comes under loose and dense connective tissue. So, which is further divided based on the arrangement of the fibers into regular and irregular. So, and there is special type of connective tissue called as mucoid or embryonic connective tissue. First, we will see the features of the loose connective tissue, so which is also called as areolar tissue. So this tissue, it consists of collagen fibers and the elastic fibers. Collagen fibers are arranged in bundles. Bundles will branch and single collagen fiber will not branch. Whereas the elastic fibers, they are single, they are branching, they unite with the other and they will re-divide. So these are the bundled collagen fibers and the single elastic fibers. So you see larger spaces which are called as areolae. Hence it is called as areolar tissue. So this areolae will be filled with the ground substance that is the proteoglycan which is not stained in regular slides. So in this areolae we can also appreciate uh, various types of cells of the connective tissue. The fibrocyte, the adipose cell, the lymphocyte the plasma cell macrophages so these are the various types of cells that we can appreciate in the fibroblast and fibrocyte which are common so next type is adipose tissue as the name suggests it contains large amount of adipose cells with minimal fibers and minimal matrix so the cells, individual cell is round, but when in the adipose tissue, the cells appears polyhedral or polygonal with peripherally situated fat nucleus. And the entire central part appears empty where fat globule will be present in the living state. So if you see the functions of this adipose tissue, it helps in storage of energy in the form of fat. So it protects various structures. It acts as a shock absorber, especially around organs like kidney, where there is peri and pararenal fat. So it insulates the body and it helps to shape, give shape to the body. 
So next is dense connective tissue, which could be regular. In the regular, we will see the ligament, tendons, the raphe, fascia, aponeurosis, which contains thick amount of collagen fibers. And in between the collagen fibers, there will be nucleus of fibroblast and the fibrocyte. So regularly arranged collagen fibers we will appreciate in this type of connective tissue. Whereas in the irregular type, the connective tissue is dispersed but densely arranged. Example is dermis of the skin. And the last type is the mucoid connective tissue, which is the embryonic tissue present during the intranatal development. So, some of the example is Wharton's jelly of the umbilical cord. In adults, it is seen in pulp of the teeth and also in the vitreous body of the eyeball. So, in this mucoid connective tissue, we will see slight larger star shaped fibroblast cells which has got very long processes which communicate with the processes of the adjacent cell. So these are the features of the connective tissue, the basic things that we should know. So do subscribe for future updates. Thank you.